first I'm going to talk about the, the, the club itself because I think that's extremely important. And as Fred said, uh, while we all love Fred and Carol and we know that they are the, the glue that holds the club together, the club itself is an incredibly valuable asset to have. Uh, when I started in the, the, the first uh, meeting 15 years ago, my company was worth maybe $4 million, so I qualified to get into the club. Uh, I was an engineer, and I had almost no real business management experience or understanding. And so Fred's correct that I listened intently to each of the speakers. I read their books. Some of them have actually become friends. Vern Harnish, uh, Jim Collins, Steve uh, Sullivan, and of course, the gifted Mr. Ken Lazat. Um, and actually, I've had some of those authors come and speak at events for my company. Uh, when I sold the company last year, uh, I sold just my interest back to the owners of the company, so that's not a, it was a very private thing, but I can tell you it was worth many multipliers <laughs> above, <laughs> you know, that original $4 million uh, value. And I really honestly can attribute the majority of that growth, uh, the fact that we were had a couple of dozen families and individuals' lives that we were responsible for to where we ended up when I left uh, with well over 200 families and individuals who get their living from our company, who depend on us every day and make us who we are. Uh, and that growth is specifically attributed to the things that I learned about running my company and management, everything from you know the carrot principles, which is how to, how to incentivize your employees, uh, to how to do your marketing plan. The guerrilla marketing guy was phenomenal. We applied those principles. Vern Harnish, how to write a one-page business plan, cut through the crap and get to a one-page business plan. I can't tell you what a difference that made when I brought that back to my company. And then Jim Collins, good to great. We had a live hedgehog. I don't know if, how many people have read to good to great. You know what I'm talking about. We had a live hedgehog in our office. We put the BHAG principles to work at Atrion, and it totally changed our company. And I would have known none of that without coming to these meetings, without committing you know, each time to, to be at the meeting, to listen to the speakers. But there's another aspect entirely that I haven't even talked about, and that's probably the thing that I value the most are the roundtable discussions. And a couple of you guys have mentioned that. The roundtable discussions are where the rubber meets the road. You know, we talk about, okay, this guy just gave a great speech like Steve did today, but how are we going to apply that to our business? Or we talk about what's the one thing that's keeping you up at night because there's probably somebody at your table who's already skinned that cat, who already solved that problem, and made a bunch of mistakes along the way that you don't have to make. So that part of the club, so between the books, the authors, the speakers, and the roundtable discussions, I attribute my success 100% to that. And I would not be in the position I am in life had it not for been for these meetings and for Fred's guidance. So now let me get to the other uh, part of it. And I've actually prepared something. I, I know I'm going, I'm going over my two minutes, so Fred, bring the hook if you've got it. So uh, Carol called me recently, and she said, you know, I think there's something going on with Fred. I think he might have age-activated attention deficit disorder. <laughs> so here's how it manifests itself, she says. Fred decided to water the garden. As he turns on the hose in the driveway, he looked over at the car and decided it needs washing. As he starts toward the garage, he notices that there's mail on the porch that he brought up from the mailbox earlier. He decides to go through the mail before washing the car. He lays his keys down on the table puts the junk mail in the rubbish bin under the table and notices that the bin is full. So he decides to put the bills back on the table and take out the rubbish first. <laughs> but then he thinks, since I'm going to be near the mailbox, when I take out the garbage anyway, I may as well pay my bills first. He takes his checkbook off the table and sees there's only one check left. His extra checks are in his desk in the study. So he goes inside the house to his desk where he finds a can of Coke that he had been drinking. He's going to look for his checks, but first he needs to push aside the can of Coke so he doesn't accidentally knock it all over his papers. He sees, though, that the Coke is getting warm and decides he should put it in the fridge to keep it cold. As he heads towards the kitchen with the Coke, a vase of flowers on the counter catches his eye. They need to be watered. He places the Coke down on the work surface and discovers his reading glasses that he'd been searching for all morning. <laughs> 
he decides he better put them back in his desk. But first, he's going to water the flowers. He sets the glasses back down on the worktop, fills a container with water. Suddenly, he spots the TV remote. Someone's left it on the kitchen table. He realizes that tonight, he and Carol are going to watch TV. He'll be looking for the remote, but he won't remember it's on the kitchen table, so he decides to put it back in the lounge where it belongs. But first, he'll water the flowers. He pours some water on the flowers, but quite a bit of it spills on the floor. So he sets the remote back down on the table, gets some paper towels, wipes up the spill. Then he heads down the hallway trying to decide what was he planning to do. At the end of the day, the car isn't washed, the bills aren't paid, there's a warm can of Coke sitting on the work surface, the flowers don't have enough water, there's still only one check in his checkbook, he can't find the TV remote, he can't find his glasses, and he doesn't remember what he did with the car keys. <laughs> then when he tries to figure out, then he tries to figure out why nothing got done today. He's really baffled because he knows he was busy all day long and he's really tired. <laughs> He realizes this is a serious problem. Well, actually, he doesn't. That's where, that's where the call came in. Carol, I, Carol realizes this is a serious problem, and we'd better get Fred some help. And uh, Fred just remembered that while I was te telling the story, the water's still running. <laughs> but, but seriously, Fred, it's been a great ride. I love you guys, you and Carol, so much. Uh, I've made some great friends. Uh, throughout the years here in the club, and uh, I wouldn't trade it for anything. If I was still in, in, in um, Rhode Island, I'd be at every meeting. You know that. Thank you. Thank you.